am i starting we are starting with today we doing acids and strengths of acids acids acidity and strengths of different types of acids why is this important because uh, carboxylic acids and phenols you already seen but even in carboxylic acids the strengths of acids vary because of the groups attached to it we know carboxylic acids are dissociated in water to make H plus ions, we know they are weak acids, but their extent of dissociation depends on what we have attached to them. For example, and I want to say this first, in general, uh, ethanol, carboxylic acid looks like this and has atoms attached to this. Now, what we're going to talk about is how something attached to an acid has an effect on its acidity, meaning कि अगर एल्काइल ग्रुप से हैं तो उससे क्या फर्क पड़ेगा बेंजीन रिंग है तो क्या फर्क पड़ेगा इलेक्ट्रोनिक एलिमेंट्स लाइक क्लोरीन ब्रोमीन आयोडीन है तो क्या फर्क पड़ेगा कितने हैं उससे कितना फर्क पड़ेगा कितने दूर हैं उससे कितना फर्क पड़ेगा सो वी डिस्कसिंग हाउ एल्काइल ग्रुप्स एंड क्लोरिन ब्रोमिन आयोडीन हैव एन अफेक्ट ऑन द एसिडिक नेचर of a carboxylic acid to understand that first we have to understand ki why are carboxylic acids acidic in the first place why do they ionize we've done the idea of why does phenol ionize more than water because it makes a phenoxide ion which can spread the charge over a larger area and when the charge gets spread over a larger area it becomes more stable the ions formation is favored therefore it ionizes more than water and therefore it's an acid now similarly that's what also holds true for carboxylic acids we know carboxylic acids dissociate this way don't we we know in water they form a carboxylate ion and hco plus we've seen this reaction in basic uh, even in as also that h2 against the proton while acid loses the proton now now why does this ion ion form for this to be an acid this formation is favored now why is this ion formation favored now we know for this to form this this bond has to break and the electrons in this bond go to the o to give out the h plus so when they get the o the o gets a negative charge now what's happening here what really happens is that you should realize that one of the os is not going to have a full negative charge it's actually this is what happens the charge gets spread over both the oxygens and now how does this happen this happens and i'm going to show this to you guys because of the anion not being the way you think is going to be it might look like this to you but what's really happening is this is that this is a sigma bond and a pi bond so i've drawn the sigma bond like that and i'll draw the pi bond like this that's the first pi bond between the carbon and oxygen and this oxygen by the way when it gets a negative charge it already has six electrons one bonded and five more but one minus means an extra electron aa gaya so it's got six unbonded electrons which means three lone pairs and one of those lone pairs is in the same plane as these p orbitals and when you have that you have the same problem as you might have seen in phenols or alcohols uh, benzene where the p orbitals in the same plane start to overlap and when they overlap then this guy's negative charge is no longer on it itself anymore it's now spread over this hole but because the reason why it's spread out even more evenly is because identical to this oxygen there's another oxygen here which is equally electronegative than this fellow so it's not just that there's some pull here it's an equal pull on both sides so the electrons are shared universally equally symmetrically equally between these two oxygens and that's why the charge gets spread over this whole area and when it does that in 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 actually books later on in life a carboxylic anion a carboxylate anion is better drawn like this that's the true picture of a carboxylate ion we write it like this because in a levels we don't do resonance structures we don't do much delocalization 
but the reality is this is what a carboxylate ion looks like it is delocalization and the charge is spread evenly across the three atoms because though atoms are electronegative and they're pulling it equally and this delocalization makes this ion favorable to form that's why acids ionize now that's the reason why carboxylic acids ionize that's first the second thing so now that's why they ionize they're more acidic than alcohols because this ion is more stable than a normal alcohol and even more stable than a phenol anion now exam may obviously you should write it like this acid and C double over minus this is what you write but this anion is more stable than phenoxide and more stable than alcohols and water ka hydroxide ion so between water ethanol and a, carb, a phenol and this acid this ionizes the most makes the most H plus ions so amongst the four is the strongest of the acids and how does one prove that if you go to slide number two there's a table in slide number two this table proves and we're comparing by the way six carbon alcohol six carbon phenol six carbon acid carboxylic acid this proves that which is the strongest acid now with sodium all three react because the H is given off easiest everything reacts with sodium but anyways kisat the alcohol doesn't re react but phenols react and normal carboxylic acid will react but sodium carbonate kisat sirf sirf carboxylic acid reacts which tells me in this case that hexanoic acid ki strength is greater than phenol ki strength which is greater than hexanol ki strength which hexanol any hexanol it doesn't matter so acidity strongest for carboxylic acid then phenol and then alcohol and to prove that you add sodium hydroxide phenol and acid will dissolve but between, between the two of them if you add sodium carbonate only the acid will dissolve not the phenol so with any sodium carbonate, only the carboxylic acid, you get bubbles of gas. And NaOH, phenols and hexanol will dissolve. So you'll see them mixing and not having two separate layers. Hexanol and NaOH will have two separate layers. They won't dissolve. No, I know, see the irony in that. Now, so what we're going to discuss is relative acidities. Now, Now you have slide number three. I'm going to zoom out to show both. In slide number three, you have two diagrams, guys. And I want to talk about how. Now, okay, so what are we doing here? Now, what we're discussing is that within carboxylic acids, by adding different substituents on the carbon, how does the acidity change? That's the key. Because what happens is, understand this general principle first. That if, let's say, you attach uh, an atom to the carbon, just by acid group here. Now that atom could be either could uh, either pull electrons away from the uh, from the acid or give it. So let's say I have, let's say, I'll put an X and Y, and the diff and whatever they are, we don't care about them for now. What the actual identity? Just that. One, elect one is pulling electrons away from the ring and one is giving electrons, no, not ring, sorry. One is pulling electrons away from the acid group, one is giving electrons to the acid group. Now, think about this. Remember what makes these guys an acid? That they will easily ionize to form the anion. And the anion that has more charge spread out will be a more stable anion. So therefore, its formation will be favored which is why we will make that and therefore this key formation favored hogi uski acids are strong hogi because jab wo anion banega only then will you get the H plus ion so we basically in both these cases we want to see whose anion will be more stable therefore it will give out more H plus ions therefore it will be a stronger acid so the next five six slides seven eight slides are on based on this basic principle and then we look at the exact examples for, for them but let's focus on this for a second so now I tell you that X is pulling electrons away from the acid group. Now that means when they make the anion, that's exactly what X will do. The anion will have a negative charge here, but since the X is also, let's say, electronegative, it'll pull the electrons 
towards yourself, will that spread out the charge or no? Yes. yes. Because yaha tha aur ab now it's going towards this side also. So that will like spread out the charge, which will mean that its anion will be more stable, which means they will form, it will form the ions more readily, which is like giving up H plus ions also, which makes this a stronger acid. Therefore, the opposite happens here. Jab Y is going to give electrons to the elect because you know, understand that if Y is not electronegative, but these O's are, then the O's are going to pull the electrons away from the Y, which means the electrons will not build up here. Wherever you have a charge build up, you're going to be less stable. So because it's charge built up here, its anion will be less stable, its anion formation will be less, uh, less favored, therefore this will be a weaker acid. So what do we have? Weaker acid and stronger acid. That's the general principle. And so as, and then you can also compare between two elements who are going to pull the electrons more, the guy that pulls it more will be more stronger of an acid. Why? Because the more pulling, more spreading of charge. That's simply what it is. And we were asked to look at first, so really, X tends to be an electronegative element like chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And Y, an electron releasing group, tends to be an alkyl group. So alkyl groups versus electronegative elements like chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And both can be compared to the neutral H, because H neither gives electrons, neither takes, because it has one electron that's bonded, no electrons to give. So on slide number three is what you have. So let's go to slide number three. So here I've got two. The difference is that in the lower example, there is no alkyl group on the carbon, but there's one carbon right here. So that carbon gives electrons to the anion, builds up charge here. Now why is the electrons going this way? Because these two guys are electronegative. But because of chlorine being here, what happens is there is a slight movement of charge towards chlorine because it is negative. When the electrons move towards chlorine, the, they reduce the negative charge here. If they reduce the negative charge here, this anion is more stable, which means that it will become a, it is a strong coming from a stronger acid. That's one. All right. And if you do the opposite, if you give more alkyl groups, then it will give more electrons. So first we'll discuss alkyl groups, then we'll discuss the electronegative elements. Okay. Now this is what we discussed. That electron donating groups. Ye kon se hote hai, by the way? Alkyl groups. Decrease the acidity, the acid strength of a carboxylic acid. And electron withdrawing groups. These are electronegative elements. Electronegative elements like like chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine. They will increase the acid strength. And to show that, let's talk about slide number four first. You have slide number four. Farak kya hai slide number four mein? Methanoic acid, ethanoic acid and propanoic acid. The number of carbons increase, which means the number of electrons they can give to the, the anion side, it was going to increase. When that increases, the negative charge increases here which means the anion becomes less stable, which means its formation is not as much favored. That's why the ionization decreases. All right. And if ionization decreases, Ka will, so down this list, Ka is decreasing, which is why Pk is increasing because Pk is minus log of Ka. So that means if Ka decreases, Pk increases. And why is this happening? Because the alkyl groups, electron releasing, makes the anion less stable, less favored to form. All right. On the next slide, slide number five. Yeah, this is five, by the way, not four. So here I have an example of all three compounds with different number of electronic elements. One, two, and three. And what you will see here is that if you have one, compare this to methanoic acid because methanoic means H tha, CH3, CWH. If you just go back up for a second and understand this is methanoic acid. It has no CL but in CH3, its ionization is only 0.42. 
But when I compare this with uh, this guy, which is chloroethanoic acid, putting a chlorine goes from 0 0.42 to ionization of 3.7. And you put two, they pull it even more. So its charge or come ho gaya. That means the ion is more stable. And look at the amount of ionization, 21%. Putting three pulls the electron so much to the side, the charge is so less that it becomes very stable. And look at the extent of ionization. More than half the acid will ionize. So if for well, the idea here is that if electronegative elements increase in, in amount, the electron withdrawing effect increases, lowers the charge on the anion part of the carboxylate ion, meaning making more stable, making, meaning that this ion is more favored to form, therefore the ionization of the acid will increase. Meaning this will ionize much more than the first one because this anion is more stable than the first one's anion and the reason why it's more stable is because this charge is more distributed than this one chloroalkyl. Which by the way one chloroethanoic acid is still more, sta more uh, acidic than simple ethanoic acid because there is no electronic element. We are going to look at three different variations. This variation was, I mean three different and even electronic elements. Because in this case, what the variation you saw was that the number of electronegative elements increased, which created a difference. The second is, we'll also look at is, is that the type like bromine, chlorine, fluorine, and iodine. The third is how far away that is from the functional from the functional group. So first, let's discuss this this simple comparison. Very important. A normal ethanoic acid and chloroethanoic. The difference is because this guy is pulling the electrons towards itself even in the anion part which makes this anion more stable its formation is favored which is why this is a stronger acid than ethanoic acid that's what's said in slide number six and seven yeah and the idea that the more electronegative elements I have in slide number eight the greater the electron withdrawing effect, the more spread out the charges on these guys. Therefore, stronger. So trichloro is a stronger acid because its anion is more stable than simple chloroethanoid ion. Because between the two anions, between this guy and the guy with only one chlorine, and I'll just draw that so that I can have a comparison. Between these two, because it's all about the anion, guys. It's not about the atom, it's about molecule, it's about the anion. Dono mein monochloro and trichloro mein. Farak kyun hai? Because the trichloro is pulling electrons from three places, so it reduces the negative charge of the anion, making the anion more stable. Chloro, single chloro, it pulls it, but eh, compared to three, not as much. More stable, less stable. But obviously, the one is still, one chloro is still more stable anion than a a non ethanoic acid ka anion, which is chlorine heavy. So having a negative ion pulls the electrons towards itself. So that's what's been discussed. So this is a summary slide. The number of electrons, uh, like withdrawing groups increase, the ionization of the acid increases, Ka increases, and therefore pKa decreases. Now moving on to slide number 10. Now comparing chloroethanoic with iodoethanoic. So if this was Cl, ki jaga, I le aate, to unme farak kya aega? The anion, again it's all about the anion stability. So why would this anion be different than Cl's? Cl is more electronegative, pulls the electrons more, spreads them more. I is less electronegative, pulls the electrons less, spreads the charge less. So this anion has less stability than the chloroethanoid anion. That's why chloroethanoic acid is stronger than iodoethanoic. Because iodine is less electronegative, and that's the case. That's what we just discussed. And in slide number 11, you have all the, uh, the other uh, halogens, bromine, chlorine, and fluorine. And the more the electronegative of the element, the more it pulls the electrons, the more it pulls the electrons, the more stable the anion, more stable the anion, stronger the acid. Ka increases and pKa decreases. That's the third comparison. Then 
सो द आइडिया वॉज दिस ना कि दे जनरल फॉर्मूला में इफ एक्स इज इलेक्ट्रॉन विद ड्रॉइंग दिन इज मोर स्टेबल मोर एसिडिक इफ एक्स इज इलेक्ट्रॉन रिलीसिंग लेस स्टेबल आना है ओके दैट्स आई वॉज सेंग है इफ एक्स इज इलेक्ट्रॉन विद ड्रॉइंग स्ट्रॉगर एसिड बिकॉज ऑफ दिन आयन बींग स्टेबलाइज एंड इफ एक्स इज इलेक्ट्रॉन रिलीसिंग लाइक एल्काल रूप्स then the larger the electron releasing effect the less stable the acid is which is why now we can compare even like slide number 13 pe ethanoic and methanoic acid q why will they have a difference because of the anion again the methanoic methanoid anion versus ethanoid anion mein farak ye hai ki ethanoid anion mein the electrons are being released from the extra alkyl group here to the कार्बन यहां नहीं है इस कार्बन में सिर्फ हाइड्रोजन है बट दिस कार्बन हैज एन एक्स्ट्रा कार्बन ग्रुप इलेक्ट्रॉन्स गो दिस वे इंक्रीज द इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी ऑफ दिस एनायन रीजन व्हिच वो मीन दैट मेक्स दिस एनायन लेस स्टेबल देन द मिथेनोमेट एनायन मेकिंग दिस फॉर्मेशन लेस फेवर्ड देन मिथेनोमेट सो देयरफॉर मिथेनोइक एसिड इज स्ट्रांगर देन एथेनोमेट दैट्स व्हाट आई वाज सेइंग यस 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 Now, so as the alkyl groups increase in size, this is slide number fourteen. As the alkyl groups increase in size, the acidity decreases because the ions lose their stability. Because as the alkyl groups are larger, more electrons go towards it. Forget this for a second. As the alkyl groups are larger, more electrons go towards the anion part of the side. More electrons means the ion is less stable. The ion is less stable; it's formed less. Ka is smaller. and pk is larger this is an exception because this is not a normal alkyl group this is a benzene ring which in fact helps in the delocalization of the cloud so benzene ring should be treated separately from the other normal alkyl groups all right now yeah 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 the one last thing i this should be actually done earlier before this is that the position of the cl atoms also now in dono mein farak kya they are both isomers they have the same number of carbon atoms same everything the only difference is the position of the cl ek yahan hai aur ek yahan hai one is closer to the acid group one is further away from the acid group who will have a greater pull of the electrons from the acid group the guy closer which means ye zyada pull karega when means ka charge kam hoga isse between the two of them which will be stronger acid upar wale Two chloro will be stronger than four chloro. Yeah. Now in slide number sixteen, we talk about benzoic acid, which is the fact that the anion is delocalized over the whole cloud. Also, so it's a much more stable anion than a normal six-carbon acid would be. So that's that's the, yeah. Ha. Huh. Acha. Now one last thing: How does an alkyl group affect the benzene ring also? So if it's benzoic acid, but again, we were about to ask if the uh, if the add-on on the benzene is it electron releasing or electron withdrawing? If it's an electron releasing, it will have a domino effect on an electron releasing here, which will make the anion less stable. Hence, it will ionize less and be the value of Ka less. the same effect as an alkyl any electron releasing effect directly having on the acid group will also have the same effect if it's bonded to a benzene ring because now that's part of delocalization the whole thing so this group will affect the delocalization if this is electron releasing it pushes the electron away towards the anion the anion becomes less stable less formed if this was cl which is by the way i believe the next guy usme this pulls the electron away which makes it less on this chart therefore it uh, it is a stronger acid than this but it's, it's more than this obviously this value is in look at this ionization it's a little more ha this is wrong your book has this right right this is 3.99 yeah again you have to learn all these values of pk obviously i'm kidding you don't have to learn these pk i am just joking guys cheese No, you have to learn this, but you have to learn. You have to learn. So let's see if you can attempt this, guys. Let's see if you can arrange these molecules or compounds 
and the increasing order of asset strength, meaning weakest first to the strongest at the end. All of these. Let's see if you can do that. Do it on paper for yourselves. So in the order of the weakest thing first, what's the weakest thing? Ethanol. Ethanol. Good, good, good. So let me zoom out here. Yeah. So the first guy is, the weakest is ethanol. Then, two methyl phenol. Good job, guys. Good job. Then, this is weaker than? Hi, hi, hi. Satke jama. Then, yeah, before any of the electronegative elements come in, it's propanoic acid. Then we've got so one second now. So we've got this guy out. 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 So now we've got left one is three chloro and two chloro and two two dichloro, right? So this is the most. And uh, there are two dichloro, two two dichloro and two two dichloro are the most. But what is the first thing? 3 and 2 dye. So, 3 and 2, the 3 chloro is less acidic than 2 chloro. So, 3 chloro propanoic acid, then 2 chloro propanoic acid, then 2 to 2 dye chloro, and then 2 to dye chloro, propanoic acid, and then Yes. To to die. Uh, my spelling is out. Forget it, please. <laughs> added. Asking you added the cover. Okay, done. Okay. So this is acid strength and acid behavior done. Let's.